Hello and Cade Mila Fortier to Dublin. In today's video we are going to take a walk around one of the oldest parts of Dublin city and tell the tale of an intriguing female character who walked these streets in the 1700s. Darkie Kelly was an Irish woman who ran a house of ill repute a Copper Alley close to the medieval heart of the city. Her eventful life would see her be accused first of murder then witchcraft, and even of being a serial killer. But did Dublin really have a serial killing witch in the 18th century? Or was she a victim who was silenced by powerful members of the infamous Hellfire Club that frequented her business? One thing we know for sure is that she met a gruesome end on Gallows Road in 1761, a short distance from St. Stephen's Green. Join me for a walk around the streets of Dublin to learn more about the life of Darkey Kelly. If you have ever visited Dublin, chances are you may have gone for a pint in Darkey Kelly's pub on Fishamble Street on the outskirts of Temple Bar. Fishamble Street is one of the oldest streets in Dublin city that once lay just inside the medieval walls that protected the city. The route that it takes as it curves its way down to the River Liffey has not changed since its creation and the name Fish Amble refers to the fact that for much of its life it was a market where the people of Dublin came to buy their fish. The word shambles describes an open air meat market that prospers here until the late 1600s. The famous Darkie Kelly's pub is named in honour of an intriguing and mysterious woman from Dublin's past who has become an intrinsic part of the mythology of Dublin city. Dorcas Kelly, known by her nickname Darkie, as the name Dorcas is derived from the Irish word Durka meaning dark, ran a brothel on Copper Alley called the Maiden Tower. Copper Alley is now a quiet laneway that comes to an abrupt end to the rear of Darky Kelly's pub. But in the 1700s, it was a thoroughfare that connected Fishamble Street to Exchange Street. It took its name from a mint that produced copper coins there around 1608. The building that housed the Maiden Tower is no longer there, and it is not the kind of place I would recommend hanging around for too long, as its quiet location can attract some interesting characters. But let's take a walk along this old alley that follows the route of a Viking track, as it is the beginning point of our story. It is here in the 1750s that Dorcas Kelly lived and worked as the Madam of the Maiden Tower. The main streets around the alley were a hive of activity in a city that was so much smaller than the one we know today. Businessmen, aristocrats and politicians went about their business a short distance from Dublin Castle and many of these gentlemen were the clientele of the Maiden Tower. Kelly's life before the events that were about to unfold is a mystery as almost nothing is known about her past or even what she looked like. But in 1760, her place in the lore of Dublin would forever be secured 
as she was arrested on suspicion of murder. A shoemaker by the name of John Dowling had been murdered on St. Patrick's Day in 1760 and Darky Kelly was the prime suspect. At her subsequent trial she was found guilty. She had pleaded for leniency with the claim that she was pregnant but this was unsuccessful and was sentenced to a brutal punishment of being partially hanged and then burnt at the stake. The execution of Darkie Kelly took place on the 7th of January 1761 on Gallows Road, Dublin, or as we know it today, Baggett Street Lower. The execution would have been a public affair, with crowds gathering to watch the events unfold. The low standing of women in society at the time was even reflected in the punishment handed out for murder. A man convicted of the same crime as Kelly would have been hanged. The additional step of burning at the stake was reserved for women. A contemporary account written in the Leeds Intelligencer in 1773 describes the fate of a woman called Elizabeth Herring who was executed in the same manner as Kelly. She was placed on a stool something more than two feet high and a chain being placed under her arms. The rope around her neck was made fast to two spikes, which being driven through a post against which she stood. When her devotions ended, the stool was taken from under her and she was soon strangled. When she had hung about 20 minutes, the rope was burnt and she sunk till the chain supported her, forcing her hands up to a level with her face and the flame being furious, she was soon consumed. A wake was held for Kelly by a group of her female colleagues and their anger at her execution flowed over into violence. Thirteen of her friends were arrested that evening for public disorder and sent to Newgate Prison which at that time was located in nearby Corn Market. The prison at Newgate was originally one of the entrance gates to the city that was built sometime around 1188 and close to where it stood you can still find a remnant of the city walls. The prison was moved to a purpose-built structure at St. Mickens Park around 20 years after the death of Kelly.
before long, rumours began to spread to the streets of Dublin that there was a lot more to this story than a simple case of murder. In her line of business, Kelly would come into contact with some of the most powerful men in Dublin who were known to frequent her establishment. One of these men in particular was Simon Luttrell, the first Earl of Carhampton, otherwise known as the King of Hell. Luttrell, born in Clonsilla in North Dublin, was a powerful member of the aristocracy, whose family had been granted a large estate at Luttrell's town by King John of England in the early 13th century. He earned the name King of Hell as he was a frequent visitor to the red light district of Dublin, known as Hell, and was also the owner of a slave plantation in Jamaica. In the taverns and coffee houses of Dublin, whispers of witchcraft began to be heard. It was said that Kelly was carrying the illegitimate child of Simon Luttrell and had been demanding financial support from him. Luttrell would then claim that Kelly had sacrificed the child in a satanic ritual and was indeed a witch. This supposed claim by Luttrell would become an integral part of the myth of Darkie Kelly, no doubt aided by the fact that Luttrell himself was a member of the infamous Hellfire Club who were widely suspected of indulging in satanic rituals, among many other things. The idea that a powerful member of elite society could find a way to discredit a woman making claims about him is not that far-fetched. There was, however, no evidence to support his story as a body was never found. It's possible that this story derived from a scandal involving Luttrell's equally nefarious son, Henry, who attacked a young girl in Dublin and never faced any consequences for his actions. The fact that Kelly was burnt at the stake could also have led to rumors of her witchcraft, but this was the punishment at the time for murder. This was far from being the end of Kelly's story, however, as more claims will be made about the number of men she murdered. An article written in the World newspaper several decades after her death makes the shocking claim that the remains of five more men were found hidden in the basement of the Maiden Tower. So now she was not just a murderer and a witch, but Ireland's first female serial killer too. The article was published 27 years after her death and the claim that a police investigation led to the discovery of five more bodies was not mentioned at the time of the trial, so perhaps the journalist decided to embellish the story a little for dramatic effect. So what was the truth behind all the stories of Dorcas Kelly? It seems that the countless tales that have been told of her life have obscured the facts and it is almost impossible to tell what really happened. What we do know for sure is that she was arrested, convicted and sentenced to death for the murder of John Dowling. Whether she was truly guilty of this crime or is being silenced by someone in power, we will never know. The legend of Darky Kelly will continue to live on in Dublin. Her fascinating story is a window into the life of the city 260 years ago. Perhaps she was a murderer, or perhaps she was a victim of the society in which a woman in her position had few other options to survive. The next time you pass by Copper Alley, or the pub that bears her name on Fishamble Street, keep an eye open for the ghost of Darkie Kelly that is said to still restlessly wander these streets.